Are you concerned about all this corruption being misgendered as conspiracies? Well, don't you worry. Sit back, relax, and join in the conversation as we talk with today's guest. Welcome to another LSB Film Productions podcast with your host, Chris Brooks. Hello and welcome to the channel. It's me, Chris Brooks. Welcome to another LSB Film Podcast. Today I'm joined by the marvellous Alan McClement. I had to make sure I said that right. And <laughs> Alan has inside knowledge of the Universal Credit. He used to be a, an agent, I believe. He worked for them. And so, yeah, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on and speak and uh, get my information out there. I, I really appreciate it. Um, it's obviously needed. That the, the more people that invite me on to do this, the more people it can get to. So I'm I'm more than grateful for the opportunity. No, absolutely, it's my pleasure. So what's what's going on in the world of corruption? Well, <laughs> well I mean, how long have you got? Um, it's at least uh, an hour. Yeah, at least an <laughs> hour. I mean, I just ah. Uh, I actually just done a video yesterday again of more DWP criminality. Um, and even though I spent a year on their, their helplines, as they're called, I was still quite infuriated by what I was reading yesterday, um, that they're now using the Proceeds of Crime Act against benefit uh, benefit claimants who are claiming benefits fraudulently, um, which really, I mean, it boils your blood anyway, Chris, but when you start mm. reading things like that, and I think to myself, so you are using the proceeds of Crime Act against people who are apparent benefit cheats, and yet you're fraudulently deducting money from people's accounts every month, and and yet you're, you're, you're accusing someone else of, of committing fraud. And when I seen it, it made me think of uh, Joseph Goebbels' propaganda. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and in his book of propaganda, he says that um, you have to accuse your opponent of that of which you are guilty because um, mm. it obviously switches everything around and that would appear to be what they're doing and um, they definitely use the, those types of philosophies and that, that rhetoric, there's, there's no doubt about it I mean, I'd said this in the video as well that when, when I was actually at the job I could never, like before that I could never understand how Nazi Germany ended up in the plight that it did I just I couldn't wrap my head around it Chris it just, it just didn't compute with mm. me until I started happened. doing that yeah <laughs> until I started doing that job. And I thought, all right, okay, this is how it was possible. Just people that are in fear, that don't want to say anything, they're, they're not comfortable with themselves, they're worried about their bills, the cost of living, et cetera, et cetera. And I understand all that, Chris, I absolutely do. Um, but we have to remember that this benefit system is there for people that when you maybe fall on hard times, which we all do, one at one time or another, mm. you need to be able to rely on that system and you can't rely on it anymore. And there's still a lot of dinosaurs out there that say, oh, they're quite happy to see benefit claimants going through this um, because they think, well, they've had enough. They're, I'm work, I'm out working. Um, they're sitting at home doing nothing, getting their rent paid good enough for them. And I'm very sorry, but that is the wrong outlook. Um, it is when you, these... It's the wrong outlook, especially when you consider that the politicians and the big businessmen who are tax evading to the hill yeah. are using all kinds of expenses to, yeah. to to fiddle the system. But the very poor people who are struggling, oh, no, you can't, you can't. It's, it's ridiculous. The difference between the two, Chris, is, is the rich politicians know the loopholes, whereas mm. the smaller people don't. Mm. And that's sort of one of the reasons why I came forward because I thought, well, if I can come forward and just make a few YouTube videos to first and foremost let people know that it's not it's not their fault, it, they're not crazy, and maybe shed some light on how the process work, I thought that maybe um, it would it would help things, and it has, it definitely has. But they've what they've done is they've the, so the pack form that I mentioned that they they used to um, communicate with job centres, apparently that's not as, as as much in use as what it was. Um, Thankfully, I've got in contact with someone else. Who, well, they contacted me. They're still doing the job. And, and they'd corrected me with regards to saying that, I'd, that it's unable for them to get into certain accounts. I've misread it or misheard what my other colleague had mm -hmm. told me. So, But this individual is going to keep providing me with information every time. I was, I was going changes. to ask you, because now you're out of the game, how are you getting yeah. your information? But you've just answered that question. Well, there's so, actually been quite a few, uh, Chris. So people that, 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 that would have been my colleagues on, on, on the telephone lines, they've contacted me to say, you're absolutely right. I don't know how I've 
managed to get through all this time. And then you've got people who used to be civil servants that maybe retired 10 years ago and, and four years ago saying, yes, Alan, this is this is why I retired early. This is why I've left, because mm-hmm. I could see that this is the way where it was going. And ever since they've put it onto universal credit, Chris, it's just that's been a fraud and a scam in and and of itself because of what people have lost out on from migrating from the old systems to the new. Um, And that that was the reason for it. See, I'm I'm stuck on universal credit at the moment. I'm I'm on it myself now, Chris. Yeah, and it's just like having a noose around your neck. Yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah, like I say, I'm on it myself just now. And I mean, you need to cover your bills. Of course you do. Um, I'll be done. I mean, this will be the last month I'm on it because um, I've got everything set up now. I can kind of manage this and sort of got a little timetable where I can now add some hours to it and start to get back to work. I don't think I would have been able to do that um, had I been at the beginning doing all these videos and trying mm. to manage a job. So that, that I'm one of these people that needs to focus sort of, um, like on one thing and then move on mm. to the next. But thankfully, there's 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 I've got a case manager as well who's They've been very, very helpful uh, sending me any new information or new process changes that you can then say, well, this is how it's changed and this is what you need to do. So there is very, very good people out there. And there's a, there's a lot of people that say, how how can the good people still do that job? And it's like, but we need because them to do that job. they've got bills to pay as well. Yeah. They've got bills to pay, absolutely. But we still need them to do that job, Chris, mm. because they... they they're the ones that's going to stop people's going hungry. Um, yeah. And that, that's, that was my mission, to make sure that no one went hungry on my watch. You can't always be successful in that because of the way it's set up and the and the, the lack of help that you can give people. But that doesn't mean to say you can't be a human being. But when yeah. you've got people within the job that are telling you, you shouldn't question this, you need to be as ignorant as what I am, then I'm sorry. But that, that was the beginning of the end for me, like because I thought, well, no, I'm sorry, but I am not going to sit back and, and comfortably eat my dinner and go to sleep at night while I know what's going on. I'm not, I'm, I refuse to do it. I'm not going to do it because it's all right saying, well, unlucky for them, I'm okay. That's fine. But as I said just a few minutes ago, you never know when you're going to need this benefit system. Yeah, I, I, am a, I, I am a big believer in karma and what goes around yeah. comes around. Definitely. And I do think oh, every definitely. politician and governmental worker should at least have to do five grams of mushrooms before they're given <laughs> any kind of any kind of role it, where it comes to yeah. other people because they'll have a completely different outlook. Well, any politician that, that words that into any campaign, Chris, I'll, they'll have my vote. And it's a very good idea. <laughs> well, yeah, I think also really ayahuasca, well. you know. Yeah, well, I, it's something I'd like to try myself. I had a mishap with a mushroom the other week there. Oh, um, did you? It was an accident, yeah, because I, 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 I smoke cannabis at night time. I just have one or two at night, although I've been indulging a little bit more recently for some reason. But anyway, I, I, I just it's do it. Stress. I don't do it through the day. Yeah, it's just it's for the stress, obviously. But um, I don't drink alcohol or anything like that. I don't take any other drugs. Well, I like I like edibles as well because I don't smoke. I don't smoke mm. cigarettes. So I like to keep the tobacco use down. And yeah. I'd, I'd, taken a, I'd taken a bit of chocolate thinking it was edibles and I'd ate four pieces of it, three or four pieces of it, and it turned out that it was LSD. It was just an Easter <laughs> Sunday a couple of weeks ago. So I actually think I saw of, your post about that. Yeah, it was a wee bit of a mishap. So I'm just not, I've had some of the best nights of my life on those things, Chris, but I think you, there's a time in your life for those things, and I think mine's has passed. Um, yeah. I would like to try ayahuasca because it's something, that's how you walk with the, with the gods, mm. as they say. I just don't like the idea of puking and shitting myself. Yeah, I know. I know that's the thing that puts you off it, isn't it? And I think, it I think everybody does that the first time they do it. And it doesn't. it's not just five minutes to it. It's for 45 minutes to an hour, they reckon, it, it lasts before it actually starts kicking in. So, uh, we don't, we'll see. Um, if I get the opportunity, I would probably do it, but... Um, I might you say if this is why it's banned here, that though, Chris. That's why because that, it's that, enlightening. That, Alcohol is yeah. a depressant, and it keeps yeah. you down. It keeps you su- suppressed. Ayahuasca is called the spirit mo- molecule, yeah. um, and and it's it's it absolutely that's what it is. Because once mm-hmm. you ingest it, then you connect in through your third eye and your your third eye, sorry, and your pineal gland, which opens you up to the real reality and not the manipulated one that we've got here, which is like you say, why they don't want people using it. Yeah. I think it was, um, I'm pretty sure that was what David Icke took when he went to he the did. Amazon. Yeah. 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 yeah he did. In 2003. And I've, I've read the, uh, the actual, um, the communications that he got while he was doing it. And yeah. it's just, it's just absolutely amazing how, mm. like, and I've learned there's, there's one passage in it, um, or a couple of passages in it that I've, 
not live my life by, but I always keep them in mind. Um, like infinite love is the only truth. Everything else is illusion, and that is the main one. And then there's another one that was said that if it vibrates, it's an illusion because apparently consciousness doesn't vibrate at all. It's just still calm, pure. Mm. Whereas everything that vibrates is is illusory in nature because it's just vibratory waveform information, like that's decoded into three dimensional reality by our decoding system screens, if you like. So, <laughs> and it's but that, I mean that's not hard to understand, Chris, because we've got. We've got the technology now that kind of mirrors it a little bit uh, with regards to reality. So I've said it many times that if you sit in 1995 and spoke about Wi-Fi, people wouldn't have believed you that it was possible. Um, but now everybody's got Wi-Fi and we can now, we can kind of grasp that even though we can't visualize something, it doesn't mean it's not there. Mm. And I think that's helped. Well, it has certainly helped me a lot in understanding um, the world. And I was actually a late bloomer to smart technology. It was 2014 before I started using it. So, no, that's fair. Anyway, we digress. And f- and for the um, for the sake of YouTube, we don't t- we don't condone taking drugs. Um, no, we I, don't. I, and and I actually haven't had any weed now since December. Oh, so. well done. Well done. Only Do you because... feel better, Chris. I wouldn't necessarily have to feel better. I feel more angry sometimes. Yeah. But I think it's a case of when you let it get, when it becomes in control of you. So yeah. I know it's my productivity or making videos. I just didn't have the oomph to do it. And so I thought if I want to make a go of my channel, I have to, I have to have the focus. Now some people yeah. it works the opposite. Some people it really drives them. Yeah. And I, I, I would say I'm like that. you. Mm. I would say I'm like, good. It's just, I need to balance it. That's why I just kind of one or two or maybe three and I don't do it through the day because everything has to be balanced out, Chris. And, yeah. and I, See, think I have, I have such an addictive personality. It's, yeah. it's all or nothing. Yeah. And same so here, I, I tend to just go nothing. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Christmas is boring. But no, yeah. anyway, as we were saying about the uh, universal credit, we'll have to do another podcast on that kind of we stuff because that's fascinating anyway. So um yeah so what have you what else have you uncovered of recent I noticed that there was a um they're upping the universal credit but so they're given with the one hand but at the same time they're taking it with the other because it's going to affect certain people and well when you there's so much there's so much to it Chris there really is a lot to this and someone I mean, there's some brilliant people in the comments that are, that, 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 honestly, they're geniuses and they come out with things and you think that's absolutely brilliant. And there was one in particular where a guy had told me, he says, Alan, I've just been thinking, um, these cost of living payments and these these fraudulent deduction, deductions that you're talking about, it would appear to me that um, they're, they're, they're adding these deductions to cover these cost of living payments so they're not actually giving out anything less. And I thought... Do you know something? That's more than likely exactly what they're doing. Because when you look at the deductions... Yeah, they're just recycling it. When you look at the deductions, they're exact. Like I mentioned on my mum's statement where one week she would have like, it would be £60.98 like as a deduction. And then the next week it would be £30.45 and £30.44, two deductions. So the deductions may be different, but it always equates to the same number in the end. And this is on probably hundreds of thousands of people's um, claims, Chris. Mm. And I've done a video the other week there on just just if they were, just from them removing that month, because there's 13 months in the year and the old GSA system used to get paid fortnightly, which is why your day changed all the time. Um, but since they've changed to universal credit, they've done away with four weeks worth of payments. And I ran some numbers the other week there just, just to get an idea or get a feel for how much they're saving. And they're just from doing that, just from universal credit, payments or claimants and the standard allowance they're, they're saving anything between three and 11 billion per year since it's came in which is nine years now now say it's that, that's 90 billion pounds uh chris that's a lot of money you imagine what that would do for the communities of would, Britain. that would that amount of money would literally cure homelessness of course it would. Of course it would. But that money's been t- taken out the local purse um, of people and they can know this is why businesses are failing because that's missing. Businesses would have received a lot of that money. And this, this, see everyone, these economists, they make it, they speak in word salads and big words and make it sound like it's so complicated. It's not. It's mm. the oldest scam in the book. It really is. I have is. to say, not- that's why I really like Gary's economics. 
Oh yeah, I've heard about this. This is yeah, I've, I've not actually looked in it. Someone mentioned that to me the other week. There, that Gary's economics. Yeah, he's um, brilliant, and and he yeah. talks about like one way that he would change the system so you don't have all this money going to money is that he would say right, you wouldn't be taxed on your wealth, but you would have an expiry date. Uh huh. And he he just breaks down where all the taxes go and how the rich people just simply don't pay tax. It's only the yeah. poor people that pay tax. Because they know how the loopholes work, and this is the thing. And it used to infuriate me, like when they, what they would do is they would fire hundreds of money into it, like they would, like they used to inject cash into this the, into the economy to try and get the economy moving. Every time they done that, I used to say that is utterly pointless because the way this is set up, these transnational corps just hoover that up anyway. The way it's yeah. set up, and they don't give any back because they don't give any tax. Mm. This is what's happening through universal credit, albeit it's slightly different. But that's just one aspect, Chris. That's just so. What they do is, if you've been overpaid a benefit, they need to notify you in black and white to say, Mister McLean, you've been paid um, overpaid one thousand pounds from this time period whilst you were in receipt of this benefit. Um, we need to recoup this money back. Here's a telephone number where you can give us a call to discuss a payment plan. And before any deductions can be taken, whether you owe the money or not, Chris, that has to happen. And a lot of these people, it's 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 not happening. So many people are saying to me, I've not had that letter. And I'll say it again, even if they owe the money, that deduction should not be taken until they have consented to how much that deduction will be. And once you have done that, it should not fluctuate. It should always stay the same. Just like when you get an advance, you'll agree that you'll pay, say, it's £17 a month. That will remain at £17 a month until the advance is cleared, unless there's a smaller amount to take to clear it mm. at the end. It might be 13 to pay off or something like that. That's the only time it'll See, I've gone through that. I've, we've had that where they've claimed that we've been overpaid. But the yeah. thing that makes me laugh is a benefit, by definition, is the lowest amount of money that you can survive on. And so they're taking it, they're taking it from the lowest amount of money that you can survive from. Chris, see in 2015, I sat and worked it out, right? When it was, I think at the time it was about, I think you were getting about £9.80 a day or something like that at the time. And we worked it out that provided you didn't buy any alcohol or drink or smoke any cigarettes and didn't go to the pub, buy any drugs or anything like that, you would actually had on, you would have enough to live on. Once you'd paid your bills, your heating, food and all the rest of it, you wouldn't have a lot left. But you would you, you would have enough. You would get through. You wouldn't have any luxuries, but you wouldn't go hungry either. This was before any cost of living. This was before any of these deductions, or as many of them was getting added on there now. The cost of living's kicked in. And that's inflation, all manufactured. Of course it is, absolutely. The inflation's gone through the roof from it. <laughs> well, this, like you said, the sanctions that have caused it have, have, have obviously, that's a button that's been pushed to increase mm. uh, prices. Now, they're adding these deductions at the same time the standard allowance isn't enough. So even if these de even if these deductions weren't on there and the cost of living crisis wasn't what it is just now, it probably still wouldn't be enough because of the way the energy thing's working because that would be happening anyway because Russia's been sanctioned. So you imagine that, right? Before any deductions, you're still struggling. Now they've added these deductions on and it's not just three or four pounds. I've seen guys getting deducted five and 600 quid, Chris. Five and 600 quid. Are these, are these single people or are these people with families? There was, there was one in particular where there was a single mum, and I think I mentioned it in one of the videos where she was go, she was going on to maternity, and because of the way it works, as long as you provided you work the correct amount of hours, you will still receive all your universal credit. However, because this individual was going on to maternity allowance, it dropped the hours down. Um, which meant that not only did she lose out on the, the hours that she was getting because she was going on to maternity, but actually they'd hit her with us. It was almost like a sanction. It wasn't called a sanction, but they deducted £600 as a benefit cap because she wasn't working enough hours. And I had a conversation, with, there's, it's happened to a lot of people, but there was one lady in particular that said, this is something akin to Nazi Germany. Like, yeah, you're okay as long as you're contributing to the society, but you go and have a baby, God forbid. We're going to sanction you. And not so that so, so you she, she was losing like something like 25 30 hours a week from her wages. Fair enough, she was getting a hundred pounds a week maternity allowance, but that's 600 that was coming off, mm. and she's supposed to be going to have a baby. And this is this is this is this is seen as acceptable, Chris. There's another aspect to it joint claims. Now, 
Joint claims, they push people onto joint claims, even if you're not in a joint claim. The amount of people that I dealt with that had moved in with a partner, not a partner, a friend, and they perceive that it's a partner. There was one guy, was, there was a lady who had moved in with her friend who was actually, he was homosexual. Um, and what happened was they automatically assumed that they were in a relationship, um, which means that they're telling them to, to, to um, set up a joint claim so that two people can go together and then it's not as much because you're not paying out two full standard allowances. Not only that, if you're making a joint claim, and I've just, I've just dealt with someone with this that's done exactly the same thing that I managed to advise to avoid the hazard, right? So say I'm going to be moving in with someone, right? And um, they've got universal credit and I've got universal credit. I would move into their property. Let's say that was going to be tomorrow and I would create a, a joint claim and join the two claims. Now, see if I was due my payment next Tuesday, I wouldn't receive that because I've, I've, I've essentially created a new claim by joining my old single claim to a new joint claim, mm -hmm. which shuts the old claim down, which means that any payments that are forthcoming that were left on that claim are null and void and no longer dispensable because you have essentially shut your claim down and created a new one, which means you need to run through the five, six weeks again and getting advances. Advances that they're supposed to give, that shouldn't be a loan. That should be an advance payment um, because that's another way they're scamming it. And people just accept it, Chris. And it's it's it, it's so disheartening when people, like like I said earlier, oh, it's good enough for them. I'm sure you wouldn't be saying that if you were to end up caught in this benefit, like so many people are. And these, see, this is and the thing. And we're all only like two paychecks away from being on the streets. Of course we and are. People don't Some have people savings don't anymore. Yeah, we don't. People don't have savings. They absolutely don't, Chris. And that's, that's one. I mean, I wouldn't say no one's got savings, but I was talking to my, I was talking to someone about this yesterday, how there was, there was a time where you could go out to work and you, when you paid all your bills and your kids and all the rest of it, you could maybe still have a wee bit left over to put to the side. You could maybe go a holiday or take the kids away somewhere. I was talking to a guy last night that says, by the time he goes out to work, and he used to be you know, not bad money, he comes in, he pays his bills, the car, the heating, the electricity, sorts the kids out, the food, and it's done. It's it's it, That's it. So that's a bit like Victorian times, Chris, because back in Victorian times, people they would go out and work 12 hours, they would come in at night, they would maybe have enough coal to put on the fire, have their dinner, they'd be knackered, they would go to sleep, they would get up in the morning, they'd do it all over again. That was their life. Mm. Even though they were putting in all these hours, they were getting no reward for it. This is where we are going back to. This is uh, where they're And it's all designed to. to keep you down and suppress and completely controllable. And I know it seems like, and I hate to be, I don't want to put out negativity. It's it's negative information. There's no well, doubt you have about to be it. Realist, it's don't you? Of course we do, we need to face it, but the good news is that I know it's hard to see the good in all this, but I, I say it all the time, it shows you how scared they are of us. Mm. They are absolutely terrified, Chris, of us waking up to who we truly are and the power that we possess. Because once that's done, that's it. Their, their power's over because they've used that power against us. Yeah. Um, because we don't know we've got any. So they, they, they've had, their, they've had their, their way with it for all these 6,000 years they've had their way with that. Yeah. Um, and now it's it's breaking out. The human spirit's breaking out now and it's starting to say, hold on, wait a minute here. There's something seriously wrong with this. And so many people are getting together now and they're putting heads together. And I said it last night in a live, when you take responsibility for your life and you face these things, albeit it's very nasty, it's not nice to look at, but once you do that and say, I'm partly responsible for this and I'm going to change it, I'm going to become a better person, I'm going to change it. If each individual person done that tomorrow, Chris, this world would be a different place in a year's time. Yeah, it really would. It, would. it would be a different place. It's about losing the fear, isn't it? And and the only yeah. way that you lose the fear is when people unite and they come together and they work as a one, not as a... So there's a there's everything's energetic, absolutely. Everything is energy, and they say that there's like a there's like a cosmic pulse that comes from the center of our galaxy, and our consciousness, our our vibe, our spirit is connected to that. And the way we connect with it is through gratitude, appreciation, truth, love, freedom, joy. Do you know what disconnects us from it? 
fear, fear anger, anger, jealousy, all of that stuff that disconnects us from that. So that's why when you open your heart and your mind and you say, I'm going to become a better person, I'm going to learn more things, I'm going to tell the truth, you're, you're starting to get to those high vibratory levels of reality. Mm. Thus, you're going back in sync with this cosmic beat, if you like, that comes from the center of the galaxy, which, in, which is moving into higher parts or higher frequency parts of the galaxy, the solar system is anyway, which is why so many people are waking up. And this is why they're terrified. But they need to sort of try and push their agenda through as quickly as they can so they've got the control in place before it really blows up, which I, I, they've lost. They have lost. Yeah. And people say to me, well, if they've lost, why is it still as bad as what it is? Why do they not just give up? Because and, people oh, have to be shown what's yeah, going on. Do. And I suppose but that's if you're into the white hats, it's a kind of the ele the elements yeah. of... We have to play this out. Absolutely. But there's something else that's worth looking at as well. I point to Hitler in the last days of second, the Second World War when he was in Berlin. And he knew it was over, Chris. He knew it was mm. finished. The Russians were closing in. The British weren't far away. His armies were beat. But yet he still got nine and ten-year-old kids dressed up and sent them out to fight. Even because they'll go, they'll go right to the it's end. It's just collateral and, damage, isn't it? Of course it is. Absolutely, yeah. they will go right to the end of this because they say, "Why not? We've came this far. We might as well keep going and trying." And like you say, there is an element of it, but it has to play out because, see, this is the thing. If we didn't have this force here manipulating us, we would need to create it because it's helping the, the the human consciousness, the human spirit, break out of the chains. Without it, would we really learn anything, Chris? I'm not sure we would. That's it. You or need to be. You fun. need. You need to be shown the horrors. Before yep. you can wake up to what's going on and change Absolutely. it. So, Absolutely. Yeah, gonna, so, so are you a meditator? Well, I, I've tried it many, many times, Chris. I really have. You're the same I'm, as me I'm a, then. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I've got ADHD mind and I'm, I've, I've got a funny mind. And the thing is, I'm, a, I'm very clumsy. I'm a daydreamer as well. I could sit here and look out this window for the next three hours and not, it, 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 it'd be like no time had passed at all. And I'm very, very clumsy because I'm a, I'm a daydreamer because. I could be walking down the street or whatever or through the house and you think of something and I start getting a deep thought and then before I know it, I've kicked a plug or kicked a door or something like that. And I, oh, That's just no being way, but... stoned, mate. Nah, well, no, it's, it happens through the day, mate. It happens through the day more than it does at fucking bloody But I have to, I, I, I agree with you. You know, I can just sit in silence, Yeah. look out, outside and... It doesn't so that's me. one of the best forms of meditation, though. That's why I probably, or people like us, are struggle with it. Because mm. if you're a daydreamer like that, that is a very good form of meditation. And But see, the universal credit claimants, I've tried to explain this type of stuff to them on the phone. And some of them like, well, mate, you're okay. You're sitting there. You've got your wages. Your lights are on and all the rest of it. I, I've got kids. Um, it's all right for you to sit and meditate and to have all peace, love and pretty covers, but it's not possible for me. Mm. And then it would be at that point that I would start to kind of be honest with them about my own past, about my own drug addictions, where I've been. I've been in places I never, ever thought I would end up. I'm from a good family, Chris. Um, mm. They weren't like that. Um, I was just like the black sheep. And I thought, well, if I can use that experience to help other people on the telephone line, then I'll, I'll absolutely will. I mean, I wasn't going out telling everybody that, like, until they had been honest with me first. Yeah, then you yeah, would yeah. say, well, I've been there sort of thing. But the corruption's right out through it. It's just, it's it's actually endless. I mean, even commitments. So the commitments on universal credit, what they would do is they would, they would put a, a notification on there that that had to be accepted and people were logging in and the, the, it wasn't there. So they were just thinking it must be a mistake. Then a week later, they would go to get their payment and it would be closed down. The, the claim would be closed down because the, the, the payment wasn't there and people would log back in. It would be like, well, you didn't accept your commitments, but there was no commitments. There was no, there was no to-do list. And then there was other people who did accept the commitments and it was in the journal that accepted the commitments, but it had still been closed down because the commitments hadn't been accepted. Chris, I'm not, I can, I can count. I'm, all, I'm always, I'm always getting notices about reading about sanctions. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Oh, endless mate. Honest to God, endless times that people have accepted commitments and their claims have been closed down. And then you would say, oh, I can see you've accepted them. I'll put in an appeal. But the thing with the mandatory reconsiderations, there's no timeline on it. So they can say, right. Okay. This person shouldn't, ha they shouldn't have lost their payment and it shouldn't have been closed down. But, and they've appealed that, which is fine. But what we can do is we can hold this for three months if we need to mm. and then make a decision on it because there's no timeline on it. And a lot of these decision makers, I believe, are probably AI generated. Probably They probably are. And if they're not, then they're just computer drones, human computer drones that just don't care about anybody like, and I'm very, very sorry, but 
once this is said and done, Chris, and we do break out of this, those trolls and those, all the trolls and all these work coaches and case managers and, and, and the tyrants of the world who have not cared about any of this stuff and made people miserable mm. will be held accountable with them because that's the only fair. Yeah, well, last week, I, last week I did an interview with um, Russell J. Gold in America. Uh-huh. And he's, he, you know, he will say that the world isn't already run by AI. The banks are run by AI. Yeah. Everything is run by, every, all the commands that these people are just following comes from a computer. It does. Well, it's, it's a big part of my life. Everything's, well, you're right. It, even though it's nowhere near where they want to take us, we are still pretty much governed by it. We've got decision makers that are AI. We've got it's. We've got algorithms that check out things. We've got. I mean, people are creating content through AI, and I, I, people have said to me, "Why don't you get your content for AI?" It's like I, ref, I absolutely, positively refuse to do that. I'm sorry. I just. I'm not saying it couldn't help me. I want to come for the heart because that's how you learn, Chris. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to do that because when you start getting paintings or poets or songwriters from AI. You've lost, us. you've lost the human connection. Of course we have. Yeah. Of course we have. I mean, have. I will admit, I used to use AI to help me script write. Uh huh. But then I would be reading it, and I say, "This, I don't talk like this. Yeah, this isn't how I talk." So I have actually gone back to just typing my own stuff on computer. The only That's other time, the only other time I I I do sometimes use AI is eye correction. So, <laughs> so it's. <laughs> Instead of me looking like I'm reading at the monitor, it looks like I'm looking at the camera, giving a yeah. But that's, all right, that, okay. Yeah. But that, that's the only time. Yeah, I could. I mean, don't don't get me wrong, Chris. I know it can help people. I know it can help. I know there's ways that they can put things into the brain so that they can Bluetooth a signal from the brain mm. to the body so that people can have use of their limbs. That all that's yeah. absolutely fine. That's I, brilliant. I think I think it's it boils down to everything, doesn't it? it AI can be a huge help for mankind in the right hands a knife Mm -hmm. you know it can cut bread or it can kill someone a car it can drive you somewhere really nice or you can run someone over it's how it's used brilliant analogies chris i like that one with the knife that's actually really good that one it's true it can either cut bread which is an innocent thing or it can stab something someone which is a guilty thing that can that that causes a lot of a lot of problems and you're Mm -hmm. absolutely right it's just like knowledge itself knowledge itself is not net positive or negative it's completely neutral it's how you use that um and it's the same way ai it's probably neutral to a point but how it depending on how you're going to use that when you start wanting to put microchips into people and um, that can that their thoughts can be controlled from a central point then i'm sorry i don't think you're using that for good that's yeah, that's, that's different then that is scary it is i mean what, what's your this- take on elon musk i asked russell j gold this but he he didn't necessarily want to because he didn't know him, but I oh, didn't know him well. Because he's I, always I, saying that AI is we need to be careful of it. it you yeah. know, there's the the dangers there, but at the same time, he's trying to implant things into people. Well, I'll, I'll comment, Chris. Um, I wouldn't trust the man to tell me the time. I, I wouldn't. I, I no. would not trust the man to tell me the time. And you look at, I've just done a video on him, actually, a little oh, bit of yeah, his okay. background. Yeah, and um, his background, I mean, you look at Twitter, he's changed it to X. He, he's doing Freemasonic symbolism, whether he's yeah. bloody a Freemason or not, whether he knows it or not. And people say he's not a Freemason. It's like, well, maybe not. And if you but put those should... two Xs together, yeah, absolutely. Them, that is it's the Freemasonic that is square. The... Yeah. It's the square, and you look at the X, the X, it's like a, it's like a thick bit and a thin bit. Yeah. That is the, it's, it's the edge of the square in Freemason. And you see him standing going like that with his hands and covering his eye. And his dad was a deeply disturbed man who he didn't get on with and ended up having children with his stepdaughter, his stepdaughter. He was married to her mum and then he left her mum and went with his stepdaughter and had kids with her. And Elon Musk himself has said that um, he's one of the most evil men and done some of the most evil things you could imagine. When it comes to those circles, I dread to think what that means, mm. uh, Chris. And that doesn't mean you can't criticise somebody for the sins of his father. But like you've just said there, um, he's saying that AI can be a threat, but yet he's just started a company a few years ago to connect the human brain to AI. And in the video, I've done some research, like obviously, and um, there's human rights groups and 
uh, uh, the loads of different groups all over them like Neuralink because they're not an honest company. They're secretive. They don't tell the truth. They've been requested for files and photographs about the treatment of animals, which they've refused to give. They're withholding mm. it. And there's, there's financial groups that have been looking into them, like I say, um, animal welfare groups because they're, uh, monkeys have died on their watch. They've been treated badly and all that stuff. Uh, and again, he doesn't want to admit it. He doesn't want to he want to put it out there. And then you look at his his Tesla goal with electric cars. Electric cars is the blueprint for the new world. Um, they don't go anywhere because they don't want us going anywhere. And they'll go where they want us to go. And he's at the forefront of that as well. Not to yeah, mention- I've always said with the electric cars, it, they're designed. That's why we haven't got all the infrastructure. Yeah. Because nobody was ever supposed to have one each you know it's for yeah. the selected for um yeah that's few. it because they want to they wanted to sell it as well we need everyone in the one car and you don't need one anyway and all that stuff and then you look at what he's doing with the atmosphere he's had groups astronomy groups um that have been contacting him asking him what his bloody game is because he's putting 5g and he's shooting satellites into the atmosphere to beam 5g to the earth he's in partnership with zuckerberg for that he's also had a contract from the fcc to do so, um, and we, I, I've done my research into that as well. 5G electromagnetic frequencies are detrimental to human health, yeah. untested, and they've not been tested. So that's another tick. And what he's doing is as well, a lot of the, the environment's been completely destroyed by him because of these sending these rockets up into space with the space debris and the ash that's left from it. It's, it's, it's detrimental to the environment. He doesn't care. He just doesn't seem to care, Chris, but yet... He's standing out there saying that he's an advocate for free speech and he's bought Twitter to put free speech back out there. And he wants what's best for everyone. It's a load of crap, mate, and I, and I certainly don't buy it from him. Definitely not. No, His I eyes totally are dead. Agree. His eyes yeah, are dead, mate. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. yeah like so the eyes are the window session. to the soul. Don't listen to the words or the, the, or the body language can be helpful and the words can too, but always look at the eyes because the mouth and the eyes will be different. <clears throat> no, 100%. And I've even noticed it's the same with Google, really, going back to the symbology and stuff. Yeah. The Google Chrome is the 666. It is indeed, the, yeah. Go the Google um, Mail is the Masonic. That's right, yeah. Thingy. I as yeah, the, the, the kind of red triangle, absolutely. Yeah. As and, in and even the Play Store uh -huh. app um, logo is Luciferian. Right, okay, I haven't actually seen that, but it doesn't surprise me in the slightest because it really doesn't because there's no way that it's all coincidence, Chris. No. There's how many, too how many, many how many coincidences it be a coincidence. does it take? Exactly. Mm. There's just too many for it to be a single coincidence. It, I'm sorry, it just doesn't. Well, I'm enjoying just, this talk. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's always nice to, it's when someone's sort of compatible with you, Chris, and they're on the same kind of level because it does make for a better episode. I've not, I've noticed that when you're compatible with someone and you're oh, sort of on the same level, it just flows like. So I, I like I say, it's, it's a real pleasure to come on and speak to like-minded people because it's the only way we're going to change this round. Oh, yeah, 100, 100, so 100%. So do you, are you feeling quite confident then with going back to the universal credit and those institutions? We, we, you know, we've said that the days are numbered. Do you yeah. see that happening and changing within the next five, ten years? I think it has to, Chris. I think it has to. I think we all have to env envision that and visualise what this might... That, and I said this a few months ago. We need to start thinking about what that's going to look like mm. because it's us that create it. Um, whether we consent to it or... Well, we, we all, they always manufacture the consent for it, but we're always behind the creation of it. Um, through our subconscious and our conscious mind, the conscious we're manifesting it into existence. We manifest it, yes. This is why they fire their signs and their symbols and their predictive programming through TV shows and movies into our subconscious when we don't know. It then creates the reality around us. This is why The Simpsons have been so accurate yeah. way, 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 way over the years, and they have. They've, they've called it just about everybody single time, and that is not a coincidence because they know how predictive programming, consciousness, and reality really operates. So, and what do you don't... think? What do you think the thing the deal is there? With the Simpsons, because like you say, they've predicted stuff from even like um, Donald Trump going down an escalator. Yeah, I know it's you know, it's it's mind blowing. It is absolutely mind blowing how many things they've the had Elon Musk in it, the for Trump becoming president, and nine, nine, all of it, absolutely all of it. Even the guy 
who is it Mr. Burns you call him they say he's based on Jacob Rothschild and when you look at Jacob oh, Rothschild Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns. Uh, yeah, Mr. Burns yeah that's absolutely him and he's heartless and all the rest of it and what, what it is is it's, it's called predictive programming um, they know that our co-creative consciousness together creates reality we're creator gods um, mm. that's what we do and our thoughts are creating reality every millisecond of every bloody day, every hour, every day. And they know that. But because most of us don't, they can then put this information into TV shows, into music even. And that's why there's so much satanic imagery in Hollywood and in the music business. Just, and just, look, at, just, just, just look at the, just look at um, Disney. Yeah, Disney is a sexual, example. you know. There's a, there's a Disney, I can't remember, it's, I can't remember what cartoon it's in, but just type into Google Disney, ask about Illuminati, and it's in, it's like DuckTales or something like that, and there's, do you know the things that you look at um, to do eye tests, they're black and white, mm-hmm. and you go down the chart, well, there's one of them in the corner of the oh, cartoon, yeah, 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 yeah. and it just says, ask about Illuminati. Now, this, this is another part of it. They can, see, people say, if they're so powerful, why don't they just come and take over everything? Because they can't. Because free will is a universal law that cannot be breached. So what they need to do is they, they have need to tell, to tell you, for you what they're doing exactly, and it's for karmatic reasons. Yeah, isn't it? it is. Because oh, well, we did warn you. Because we can't turn around and say, Chris, we can't say at the end of this. Well, you never told me about the Illuminati. Actually, we did. We put it into that cartoon. It's not our fault you didn't see it, um, but it was there. And that—that that is how they get around it. And a lot of people think, nah, that sounds too comic booky for me. But where do you think these bloody ideas come from? That is um, true. I mean, look, look at Scientology. Scientology, mm. and this is why so many people have left it recently over the last 10 years, because Ron Hubbard he used to be a science fiction writer. And there was a bloody uh, a bloody writer's uh, strike back in the 40s or the 50s, whenever it was. And this is quoted this, and this is why they all left, because they heard it was true. And um, they came out to, his, to, to one of his partners and said, well, the religion, there's a good there's a good money earner. Why don't we just make up a religion and, and, and write it, make it up as we go along and get donations that way? And that's exactly what they've done. Um, and it's all lies. It's all, but it's not all lies. There's always truth. Contained within in the middle of a lie and noise. outside the truth or the other way around. A and, bit like and, the cly lime change. Yeah, that's that's the way. That's how they make it so potent. I said this the other night there, because people say, I don't believe anything the government says. Well, that's wrong to do because they're always going to give you a little bit of truth because it makes yeah. the lie more believable. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, 100%. So- I agree with that. So do you think then, I mean, going back to the universal credit, Mm-hmm. Oh, well, it's easy to get off these subjects to <laughs> end up in all these avenues it's crazy like but i prefer those avenues if i'm honest yeah. <laughs> um but do you you know do you think people can start taking universal credit to task to court well, or? this is what i've been looking at this week uh, and actually i've got a case manager who contacts me and oh, i was pleased to hear back from them this week because i thought they'd left um and she'd got back to me because she told me a couple of months ago that there was something where someone, they, they're asking for bank statements. And people are rightly saying, well, that's a breach of privacy. But they're using, they're, they're saying that you're accepting commitments, so you have to do it. But unless that's in the commitments, I, I'm not sure how they can get around that. But anyway, this person had taken it to mandatory reconsideration and they lost, obviously. That's what we were expecting. They will want to go to tribunal. So I don't know how long this will take. But individually, I don't think it's going to work, Chris. If one person at a time does it, or even 100 people at a time, it's when everyone needs to come together and say, no, this is taxpayer money. This is ours. This is in line with inflation and the cost of living. This is what we need to live on a day. Bare minimum, like I was explaining earlier, whether that be £15 or £20 or whatever. This is what it needs to be, and it cannot be sanctioned below that amount. And I think that if it was up to me, I would, I would do away completely with universal credit and reinstate the old job seekers allowance. Just put it back to that. In the meantime, while we sit and think up a new, a new system that's going to benefit everyone that's controlled mm. by the people and not by the people that the people vote for, which has been a huge problem for us, certainly over the last century or so. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the other thing is really that a lot of people don't realise that all this money comes out of your birth trust. Yeah, I, I, you're put on the stock market. I don't know a lot about this. I only just learned about this over the last couple of months, but apparently when you're born and your birth certificate goes in, it's a straw man that's created. 
So that's, your national that's where, the, number. This is where the expression "worth your weight in gold" comes from. Absolutely, that's right, Chris. Yeah, and this is this is the thing. Like this is what they're doing. They're they're, um, they're putting you on the stock market and trading that on the stock market. So you're a, you're you're literally a natural resource to these people. Yeah, because apparently the placenta is deemed as a stillborn sibling. And yeah, it's, well, and it's the placenta that they stick attached the fiction to. Yeah, yeah, and this, this is where the birth canal and all that comes into it as well. Like, I was speaking about this actually in a live last night, like British Admiralty Law and how everything's based on water, so we run off the law of the sea. Um, mm -hmm. This is why, like, there's an, if you get into a courtroom in America, you lot, and I was still wonder about this, like, like the American flags, it would have a gold band around it, and I used to think, why has that got a gold band around because it? Because it's been it? taken over. Well, it's because once you, if you go in and that's there, it means you've, you're right. You're, this, the constitution's been suspended, mm -hmm. and you are now being tried under British Admiralty law. Yeah. And again, we're seventy percent water. We come down the birth canal, um, all that stuff. It's all related to water. The um, river, the river bank, the river bank, the current currency. Absolutely. And then yeah. I mentioned this last night as well. Like if you go and buy a, a fleet of cars and a sale. Um, a, a receivership or a dealership or a citizenship, citizenship or just everything, every citizenship, ship. everything. Friendship. And then you go into the, the dock, the dock in, in court where a boat docks or you get bailed out, you get in hot water. It, it's, we use this every single day and yet we don't mm. know what any of it means really. But mm. thankfully people are starting to wake up to it now and we are starting to become aware of that this world is nothing like we were told it was, and I mean absolutely nothing. It's in, in fact, it couldn't be any more of the opposite to what we were told. It's well, the, ma the Matrix was not. a documentary, really, wasn't it? It was absolutely, yeah. And I never used to understand that film. Like I just didn't get it. I didn't. Un I didn't get what it was trying to say until I watched it about, it about seven years ago now, and I thought it just blew me away. It's like, geez, oh, this, this, this was in 1998, and yet people. I mean, people when I watched that film, then like, it's just a film. It's just mm. a film, but it's not just a film. And again, the people behind the governments know it. They know how this reality works. They just don't want you to know it, Chris. Yeah, that's it. And a lot of it is also so compartmentalised. So, you know, you could work for a certain section of the government and you're thinking you're doing one thing when really what you're doing is helping these people to implement something else. And well, it's insane. Yeah, that's how the contract that's how the contract industry works, isn't it? Mm. When they want to build a secret project, they'll give it one small bit to that company and then another company will get the next bit. And then, and then like you said, you said there, you only see the part that you're working on. You don't see the finished jigsaw at the end of it. And that, again, is compartmentalization, which has been very, very beneficial to them. No, it really has. And you've got to give them their dues. It's incredibly clever the, how they've played us. Absolutely. I've said it many times and they're not stupid. These people are not stupid. They're very, very, they're super intelligent. They're just not very wise, Chris. And that's why they're scared of us because we are, we are wise. We're intelligent and wise. We've got both. And once we combine the both together as a collective, their reign's over. It's done for. It's absolutely and completely yeah. and utterly finished. And they Absolutely. know it is because this is why they're doing this. This is why they're keeping on going as far as they can because they know that they've got no other option open to them. The only thing they can do is to keep going and hope for the blood and hope for mercy at the end of it, which yeah. I myself will not be too... I don't think I want to give them mercy. Like I think they deserve they deserve karma to come and bite them on the arse. Like, the and, lake of and, fire. Yeah, I mean, I'd said, I think the best thing to do, to, like your Bill Gates and that, who are being used to privilege, who are in fear themselves of their overlords. Let's not forget that. But they've still helped. Um, they would be locked up somewhere, I don't know, in a jungle somewhere that nobody could ever get to. They would be given processed crap food. Their freedoms would be taken away completely. Um, they wouldn't have many human rights like they tried to do to us. They would be getting caught up with their boosters every three to six months like they tried to do to us. Everything they tried to do to us, I would give mm -hmm. them in, inside a prison system that they wanted to give us. And that, that for, to me, would be justice. Yeah. And, yeah, justice and completely fair. Yeah. No, I totally so we'll agree see, with that. We'll see what happens. But that is, uh, you get people that say we need to pick up the guns and shoot them and hang them up with the balls and start using them as a piñata. It's not going to work. There's no point. There's no point doing that because that's just going to, that doesn't help you. It doesn't certainly doesn't help the planet because it's negative energy. Yeah. What we need is justice, and yeah, that is 100%. justice. 
And have you noticed how it seems the more academic someone's mind is, the more easily they are to fall for this kind of stuff? Yeah, because they're in the left brain, and the left brain, it doesn't deal with creativity. See, this is why kids who've got ADHD are ostracised, because their brains are connected, the left's connected to the right, and they see things differently. Mm. Whereas people, the vast majority of people are in their left brain, and they only deal with logic and hierarchical structures and all that stuff, numbers and language all goes through the left, which is needed, we do need it. Mm. But when it's completely shut from the right, it, the, the end result is what you've just said there, um, and they're very, very easy to manipulate and program, which mm. is why there's there's like soldiers to the entrance of the right brain. Um, but if you go to right brain, this is your crazy artists and your um, your rock stars that can't keep it together, and f- that's that's too far right brain. Like so, they, they they both need to be balanced out, just like so anything. It's the but- yin, yin and yang. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is. It's the yin and yang. And this is all things that we need to start working out and looking into. And my brother said to me the other week, it's not for everyone, this stuff. It's like, but it's not for entertainment. I'm not giving you this as a new music genre or a new mm. type of film you can watch. Uh, that's fine. I would never try and force it. I'm not forced to do it anyway, but that's not what this is about. This is It's about this planting is about- seeds. Of course it is, absolutely. It's about bloody finding out the truth, first and foremost about ourselves, about who we really are, really are and where we've came from, and more importantly, where we're bloody headed. Because yeah. if you don't know the first two, how do you know where you're going to go, Chris? You don't. Yeah. Again, and, this and is that's all- and that's one. where things like the LGBT come into play, where it confuses the kids. And if if you don't know what you are, then they've won. They are some of the most deeply unpleasant disturbing people I've ever had the misfortune to come across, Chris. Really, they are. Some of them are vile. And I mean vile. I remember once I'd said that men and women are different. It's it's a fact. And it's true. Like, if why is it that women who become men or men who become women can go into that sport, no bother, and, and thrive? They all do that. But why is it the other way around? Why do uh, men who become women, or women who become men rather, why don't they go into UFC or into boxing or into football? Because there's a there's an there's a an unsport there's a unsporting advantage. They've got an advantage. They're at a disadvantage, and that's why. So you can't bloody say that they're they're the same because they're not. But that's Mm. what they're telling you when the women goes in and plays like a a a man that's became a woman can go and play sports against other women. Mm. Well, it's okay. There's no unfair advantage here. I'll, I'll ask again. Tell that, tell that, to, tell that to the female swimmers. Yeah, exactly. Or tell that to the, the UFC uh, women fighters that have been absolutely smashed to pieces by that bloody, I forget her name all the time, or his name. I'm going to keep it right. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they, should, they should be in jail for GBH, mate. They should yeah. be in prison for that. It's, it's insanity, isn't it? But it's dividing everyone, though, Chris. And it is dividing people because they're... They, see, this is the thing. They know the vast majority of people are good and they'll use their empathy against us. So they use empathy against us. Oh, this is all about protecting the rights of trans people. Be kind. Bollocks, mate. Exactly. Be <laughs> kind. And they don't you know that they don't know what that means. They mm. literally do not know what that means to be loving and kind and loving because they've not got the ability to, to bloody express those emotions. That's why they run the world because yeah. they, 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 we couldn't do no what empathy. we do. We couldn't do what we do because we've got empathy and we've got a neocortex, which is the, that's that's the fail safe fail safe mechanism of the brain where for human behavior so that you can obviously kind of sit back and say, well, how's this going to affect someone else? They've, they've not got that within them. It's just straight to the art complex with them mm. and, and destruction and shoes. And psychopaths that's... really, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Just, they're just psychopaths. Narcissistic yeah. psychopaths. I, I just, I, I can't get my head around it. Like I just, but somebody like ourselves, we will never get our head around that because of the way we think. And, we've got the ability to display those types of emotions, mm. whereas, again, they haven't. That's why they've got no emotional comeback from mm. the wars that they start or the chaos that they cause. And a lot of people be- don't realise, you know, just like your everyday person, they cannot comprehend the amount of evil that people possess in order to do yeah. what they do. So they just see it as, oh, it's a crazy conspiracy theory. No, you just don't understand what level they're at. And again, it locks into, and you're right, what just, what just said there. And mm. they've not got 
they think that, well, I couldn't do something like that. There is just absolutely no way in hell that I could do something like that. So I'm not going to believe that another person who's in office or the rich, the comfy good families is going to do it because that's what they seem to base it on. They think, well, they've got all this money and nice houses and nice things and they come from very posh families, you know. So they can't be doing that kind of thing. But what people need to learn is that these posh families, they don't live your life the way me and you do. They look at things completely differently. And I mean mm-hmm. completely differently. They don't do love. It's well it's well documented about Charles, what he said. It's in Diana's book. She she said she told them when she was young that she loved them. And it he, he just kind of, whatever that is. And mm-hmm. that is actually what he said to her. Because they don't know. They literally yeah. don't know what it is. Because they've had it They're beaten so out regimented. Of them. Yeah, they've had it beaten out of them because they, they, they've had it beaten out of them, mate. They've, yeah. they've had it abused out of them. It is terrible. And these are the types of people, they're not running the universal credit system, but they're employing the people that are and they are putting their imprint on it and their philosophy on it, which is filtering through to us. And I'll call again for any agents or any work coaches not to follow these people. Do the right thing. I know you've got a process to follow, but do the right thing and make sure no one goes hungry on your watch as I did because you will make a difference to someone's life. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely. It's like it's like everyone has a favourite teacher, you know, that, that one yeah. who, who goes above and beyond. Yeah, absolutely. And that's right. And that's what we all need to start doing a little, just have a little bit of compassion, a little bit of empathy to say, no, I'm going to make sure you do not, you do not go hungry today, sir. And I'll do everything I can to make sure that that doesn't happen. And work coaches and case managers have got more power to do that than what we have. And I call on them again to do it as often as they can. I know there's rules and they'll get penalised, but there are, there is ways to do things, as I found out when I was there. No, well, I think that's a really good place and a good positive note to end on. Yeah. I have very much enjoyed our conversation. I would yeah. love to have you back on at another point in time. And yeah, perhaps exactly. we can delve into some more of the conspiratorial stuff, even though, to be fair, that probably did, did take up at least half of our conversation but then yeah, we could really get difficult. into it it is difficult to keep it on about just universal credit when there's so much else going on but yeah i would love to come on again chris it's been a real pleasure sitting talking to you and and, and thank you again for giving me the opportunity i'll be available just whenever you whenever you're ready again All okay right, that, that's brilliant well i hope everyone else who is watching this has enjoyed it as much as i have but for now it is over and out and i will speak to you again too all the best bye Thank <laughs> you.